The Big Story. Mr. Norton, do sit down. I'm sure Dr. Parrish will be coming out of the maternity ward any moment now. Uh, yes. But I wish you'd hurry, nurse. I never saw a prospective father yet who wasn't a bundle of nerves. Now, if you try to be calm, Mr. Norton. Oh, yes, sir. oh here's the doctor now. Well, congratulations, Mr. Norton. The father of a healthy eight-pound baby girl. Uh, a girl? That's right. And uh, you may go in and see your wife now, if you like. No. What? I won't see her. You don't want to see your wife, Mr. Norton? That's what I said. I don't want to see her. Kansas City, Missouri. From the wires of the United Press, the story of murder and a frustrated father. Kansas City, Missouri. The story as it actually happened. Sam Malnick's story, as he lived it. You were Sam Melnick, a police reporter for the United Press, operating out of the Kansas City Bureau. It's been a long day, a dull day, and finally your stomach tells you it's dinner time. There's one place you always go for dinner, and for your money... It's the best meal in Kansas City. So you get on the phone and make a reservation. Hello? Hello, Mom. Sam. Oh, Sam. What time will you be home? In an hour. Hey, what's for dinner? Pot roast. Ah, pot roast. With potato pancakes and applesauce. <laughs> Tell me more. What's for dessert? Your favorite. You don't mean lemon meringue pie. I do. And now, Sam, you'll have to excuse me. I've got to get back to the kitchen. I'll expect you in an hour. Oh, Mom, wait a minute. Yes? I've changed my mind. You better make that a half hour. On your way home, you stop in at Frank's Bar, next to the City National Bank building, and across the street from the Kansas City Star, just for a quick one. And you don't know it at the time... But while you're there gabbing with the other newspaper boys, your big story is just beginning to break over on 27th Street. Ed, I... I you better stop the car here. But we're still a couple of blocks from your house, Jackie. I know, but... But you're afraid to let me take you home. You're afraid your father will see us. Ed, Ed, please, let's not talk about it anymore. We've got to talk about it, honey, here and now. I'm sick of meeting you on street corners away from the house. I'm fed up with seeing you only in the daytime when your father's at the office. Tired of dodging him and hiding from him. What are we, criminals or something? Ed, Ed, you don't understand. Yes, I do. I understand. Well, maybe you're afraid of your father, Jackie, but I'm not. What right has he got to run your life like this? What kind of a man is he, anyway? He's been good to me, Ed. He's been a good father to me ever since I can remember. Only... Only what? Only... Well, he... He, he has some funny ideas. <laughs> I'll say he has. Here you are, Jackie, 19. 19 years old. And he's never let you go out with boys. I'm the first boyfriend you ever had. And I have to meet you secretly. Why? I, I don't know, Ed. I don't know. Neither do I. But I'm going to find out tonight... Tonight? Yeah. You and I are going to have a date tonight, Jack. And what's more, I'm coming to the house to get you. No, Ed, you can't. Dad will be home. That's just the point. We'll stand up to him together. No, no, Ed, I'm afraid. Dad will... Dad! Dad, Dad, Dad! Look, honey. You're going to have to make a choice. Choice? What, what choice? Either your father or me. Either I come to your house tonight or we're all washed up. Where oh, no. Yes. That's the way it's got to be, honey. You've got to stop being afraid of your father sometime. As long as he owns you like this, there's no place for me. 
Well, Jackie, shall I call for you tonight or not? All right, Ed. All right. You come to the house and I'll be waiting for you. Mother, Mother, I'm afraid. Ed will be here in half an hour and, and Dad... Is... Yes. Yes, he'll be home any minute now. Oh, I don't know, I don't know. I shouldn't have let Ed come. What'll Dad say? What'll I tell him? This time, Jacqueline, uh, I'll talk to your father. You? Oh, but Mother, I... I know. For years, ever since you were born, I've, I've never dared stand up to him. But now, it's time I did. You're a grown girl now. You deserve a life of your own. A young man of your own. Mother... Mother, I, I've asked you a hundred times, and you've never told me. Why does Dad let Edna and Ruthie have all the dates they want, but when it comes to me, well, why am I different from my sisters? It's a long story, Jacqueline. goes way back. Someday I'll tell you. Oh, Mother, Mother, it's Dad. He just came in the front door. Quick, Jacqueline. Run upstairs to your room. Jackie, I... Uh... Oh, it's you, Martha. Yes, Albert. Where's Jackie? Upstairs. Dressing. Dressing? For what? She's got a date tonight. A date? You mean... I mean with a young man, Albert. I see. Well, I'll soon put a stop to that. Albert, just a minute. Yes? You're going to leave that girl alone. Oh, am I? You're taking a lot for granted, aren't you, Martha? I'm trying to stop you from ruining Jacqueline's life, that's all. What are you talking about? Oh. Oh, I know what's going on in your mind, Albert. I've known it ever since Jacqueline was born. He wanted a boy. He wanted a boy desperately. And you hated me because I bore you a third daughter. And all these years, you... you... Yes, Martha, what about all these years? You've tried to bring her up as a boy. You've always called her Jackie, never Jacqueline. You've never let her live a girl's life. She never even had a doll, Albert. You wouldn't let her have one. She never had a party dress or, or a pair of dancing shoes nor a string of beads. Go on, Martha. You interest me. You never let her join a sorority. You never have girlfriends here at the house or, or go out with boys. Instead, you took her fishing or bowling or to baseball and hockey games. Yes, Albert. All these years to satisfy your own frustration, you've tried to bring her up as a boy. And now, now you've failed. I have, huh? Yes. Yes, Albert, you have. She's a lovely, mature girl now. She's in love with a young man. And she's going to lead her own life, and neither you nor anyone else in this world can stop it. Oh, I can't. Uh, well, we'll see about that. Albert, you let that girl alone. Get out of my way, Mother. Albert, don't you Get dare. out of my don't way. Help. She's my child, do you hear? And no one else is going to tell me how to bring her up. Jackie, your mother tells me that you've got a date with a young fellow and that he's coming here tonight. Yes, Dad. Now, you know my wishes in the matter. Dad, I'm 19 now. I'm not a child anymore. I'm still your father, and I still know what's best but, for you. Uh, Have I been a bad father to you, Jackie? No, no, Dad, you haven't. Uh, haven't we always been, well, pals? Gone everywhere together? Done everything together? Yes, but... Why, we've been almost... Like father and son, Dad. Why did you say that? Has your mother been talking to you? No, no, Dad, Why? Um, nothing, only I forbid you to go out with this boy. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm going out with him anyway. I love him. And I'm going to marry him. I see. Then I'm... We're going to lose you. Oh, Dad. Dad, please try to understand. I, I do understand. What's this boy's name, Jackie? Ed. Ed Carlyle. Ed 
Carl Island, what time will he be here? At eight. Oh, Dad, Dad, you won't raise any fuss. You'll talk to Ed, meet him. Uh, yes, under the circumstances, I, I'm looking forward to meeting him, Jackie. Oh, Dad. Dad, I knew you'd see it my way. Only, only one thing. Yes? Please don't call me Jackie anymore. It sounds too much like a boy's name. And I'm, well, I'm grown up. Just call me Jacqueline, Dad. Come in. My name's Ed Carlyle. Is Jackie... She's in her room. She'll be down in a minute. Oh. Mr. Norton, I wanted to talk to you. I'll do all the talking around here, Carlyle. My daughter tells me you two are in love. Yes, sir. And that you plan to marry her and take her away from here. From me. That's right, sir. (laughs) With your permission. You don't have my permission. I'm sorry, Mr. Norton. But in that case, I guess we'll have to get married without it. You try anything like that, you young whippersnapper, and I'll kill you. Mr. Morton. She belongs to me, you understand. She's my child, and nobody's going to steal her from me. But, Mr. Morton... Get out! I don't... Get out of this house, I say. No! No, I won't. Not until I say what I came to say. You might as well face it, Mr. Morton. Jackie's 19. She's a grown woman. We're in love, and you're going to lose her. You know you're going to lose her. Oh, I am. She's got a right to her freedom just like any other person. Mr. Norton, put put down that gun. Nobody's going to steal Jackie from me. Nobody's going to take her from me. Mr. Norton, no. Put down that gun. Dad, no. If I can't have you, Jackie, nobody else will. Mr. Norton, no. It's a little after dinner time when you, Sam Melnick of the United Press, get to your mother's house. You sniff the odors coming from the kitchen and you raise your eyes to heaven and your mouth begins to water. And you think life can be beautiful in Kansas City or anywhere else with cooking like that. And then your mother comes in. Sam, where have you been? Oh, just down to Frank's place across from the star, Mom. Oh, I wondered what happened to you. Well, I've got everything all ready. You better get washed up and... Uh Oh, no. Sam, don't answer it. Yeah, I'd better, Mom. It's probably that night manager down at the bureau again. And if that horrible man thinks he's going to take you away from my dinner again just because of the story... Oh, forget it, Mom. Don't worry. It's been a very dull day. I'll just brush him off and sit down to dinner. Melnick talking. Oh, hello, Bill. What? What? On 27th Street. Yeah, sure, I'll get right on it. On the way now. Mom, I got a rush. What about my pot roast and pancakes? Keep it warm, Mom. I'll be back as soon as I can. A big story's breaking. What big story? A father just murdered his daughter. You, Sam Melnick of the United Press have just been tipped off that a sensational murder has taken place on your beat, Kansas City. So you leave your mother's dinner table and rush down to police headquarters to get yourself a few facts. Luckily, you're the first reporter there, but you know the rest of the wolves are on their way. And the first thing you do is corner Lieutenant John Brackett in charge of the investigation. So this Albert Norton killed his own daughter, John. That's right, Sam. He started to go for her boyfriend first, but when the girl came downstairs, he spun around and let her have it. Then he broke away. And no trace, huh? No, no trace. But we've blocked all the highways, got men at all the railroad, air, and bus terminals. You know, John, he could be right here in KC. Mm, Could be. His wife called us right after he shot the daughter, so wherever he is, he didn't have time to get very far. Uh Uh-huh. Speaking of Norton's wife, where is she now? Oh, we're keeping her and the two daughters and the boy, Ed Carlisle, down here at headquarters. Mm, protective custody, huh? Yep. Then you figure this Norton is still dangerous, that he might come back and try something else. Can't afford to think otherwise, Sam. Man who do a job like this is more than a killer. 
He's a maniac. By this time, everyone and his cousin in Kansas City are swamping the switchboards, claiming they've seen Albert Norton. You check a few leads. Phony. You talk to Norton's sister and Mrs. Anna Regal. She hasn't heard a thing. You ride with a prowl car for a while and draw a blank. Finally, in deep disgust, you ask the police dispatcher to call you in case anything breaks. And you phone your mother that you're coming home for that dinner. And when do you get there... Hello, Mom. Don't you hello me, Sam Melnick. Oh, listen, Mom, I couldn't help it. I had to go out on the story. Now, how about that pot roast, huh? Did you get that story, Sam? No. Well, you're not going to get that pot roast either. I'm not? No, I kept it waiting for you so long, it's all dried out. Mm. Now you'll have to eat meatloaf. Meatloaf? Well, what's wrong with that? I like meatloaf. I know you do, son. I've got it sizzling on the pan now, and in a few minutes... Uh-oh. Oh, no. Mom. Don't you dare answer that phone, Sam Melnick. Mom, I've got to. Melnick talking. Sam, this is Sergeant Blaine down at headquarters. Yes, Sergeant. Just wanted to tip you off that the killer just phoned his sister, Mrs. Regal. What? Yeah. Better get up and see her before the rest of the wolves get wise. On my way, Sergeant. Thanks. Mom, I've got to rush. See you later. But, Sam, what about my meatloaf? Mrs. Regal, just what did your brother say when he phoned? Well, first of all, he wanted to make sure that, that Jackie was dead. Yes. And he wanted to know where his wife was. Then before I could say anything else, he hung up. I see. Oh, Mr. Melnick, just gave me goose flesh just to listen to him. Albert's always been a little peculiar, but his voice over the phone, well, sounded crazy. Mrs. Regal... Did you ask him where he was calling from? Yes, yes, I asked him right off. Said he was calling from a restaurant. A restaurant? At this time of night? Mm, that's what he said. Uh, Mrs. Regal. Yeah? While you were listening, did you hear anything over the phone that might suggest a restaurant? You know, dishes rattling, pots and pans? No. Any sound of streetcars going by? Oh, no. No, there was nothing over the phone except Albert's voice. Uh-huh. Yes, I haven't been much of a help, Mr. Melnick. On the contrary, Mrs. Regal, you have. You've been a mighty big help. In fact, you've just given me an idea. So you got a hunch on where the killer is, huh, Sam? That's right. Now, look, John, let's add this thing up. Okay, go ahead and add. The killer calls his sister at 1 a.m. and says he's calling from a restaurant. So? So there aren't very many restaurants in KC open at that time of night. Well, there are some. Sure, but they're mostly on the main streets, and you've got prowl cars patrolling them. So it stands to reason that Norton wouldn't take a chance exposing himself, and Mrs. Regal heard no streetcars or anything like that. In other words? In other words, John, the killer wasn't calling from a restaurant at all. He was phoning from a private home. Hey, that's interesting, Sam. Very. You know how many private homes there are in Kansas City? Sure. But my hunch is that the killer was calling from his own home. Oh, not that old cliche about the killer returning to the scene of his crime. I know. I said it was only a hunch. I can't back it up with anything concrete. Still? Still what? He might have gone back to his own house. You're holding the rest of his family down here under protective custody, and the house is empty. Mm, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have a look. Got to come along, John? Uh, maybe I'd better. If your hunch turned up right and I wasn't there, I'd never forgive myself. And neither would the police commissioner. <laughs> okay, John, let's go. <laughs> All right with you. Oh, 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 before we leave, Sam, there's something I forgot to tell you. Yeah? What's your, that? Your mother phoned headquarters here a little while ago, wanted to talk to you real bad. Yes? What did she say? Well, she was so upset over the phone, I didn't quite get what she was saying, but it was something about meatloaf. The Norton house is dark, with the shades drawn. You and Lieutenant Brackett try the front door. It's locked. Then in the moonlight... You notice a car standing in the backyard. You follow Brackett into the yard. The shivers running up and down your spine. 
as you reflect on what a beautiful target you make there in the moonlight, just in case the killer is home. You both go to the back door, find it locked. Brackett tries a couple of pass keys, and then... That's it, Sam. It works. The door's open. Okay. Let's go in. Look, on second thought, Sam, maybe I'd better go in and corner this rabbit myself. If he's there. Oh, no, John. I'm going in with you. Look, you don't have to, Sam. You're a reporter, but I'm a police officer. I've got to go in. It's my duty. It's my story. It might be dangerous. All right, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Okay. Oh, before we go in, you got a gun? A gun? No. All right, I'll keep my gun ready. Here, you carry this flashlight. All right, let's go in. See anything? Right over here, this table. You see what I see? Yeah. A cup of cold coffee and some cigarette butts. Looks like our friend is somewhere around. <laughs> Sam, put out that flashlight. He's in the other room. Yeah. Sam, you move to one side. Away from that door. Oh, John. Do as I say. All right, Norton, come out. Come out with your hands up. Okay, Norton, if you don't come out, we'll have to come in after you. Come on, Sam, we're going in. Drop that gun, Norton. Not before I give you this. John. John, are you all right? Yeah. Oh. Many thanks, Sam. For what? If you hadn't flashed that light in his face when you did, he'd have killed me, sure. From where I was standing, I was looking right down the mouth of his gun. And you, Sam Melnick, very tired and very hungry, phone in your story to the UP Bureau. Finally, at four o'clock in the morning, you come home. Hello, Sam. Oh, Ma, you still up? I'm still waiting for you to come home for dinner, son. Oh, gee, Mom, I'm sorry. I had to cover a big story. Your father killed his daughter because... Well, because he wanted a boy in the first place. Here, eat your dinner. Mom, this is just pie and milk. That's all I got left. The meatloaf cooked dry just like the pot roast. And do you know what, Sam? What, Mom? I wish you'd been born a girl. we read you that telegram from Sam Melnick of the United Press. As it turned out, killer in tonight's big story had tried to commit suicide in his bedroom. The lieutenant had winged him in the arm so that he dropped his gun. Killer died from self-inflicted wound just before the ambulance came. To her husband, to the bitter end, widow declared that except for insanely jealous rages, he was a good father. In order to protect the names of people actually involved in tonight's authentic big story, the names of all characters in the dramatization were changed with the exception of the newspaper reporter. The Big Story has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>